Hi everybody, welcome back. Thanks for watching another video. I'm, uh, I'm in our new 942 Fent here today. It was just delivered here last week. It's uh, October 16th today, I think. Uh, just went to uh, another farm where we rent a storage shed. I don't know if you can quite see that, but I, I picked up a six shank uh, subsoiler or ripper, I guess some people will call it. Uh, I'm gonna bring it back to the farm and then probably unhook from that, from this, and then hook up to our compact disc or a high speed disc. Uh, we had probably four inches of rain since this tractor was delivered a, about a week ago, so it's a little, little wet on the field yet to do some tillage, but I thought I had some time today, I'll bring this ripper back to the farm and it's there when I need it. I drove with it some when they delivered it right away. I, I hooked it up to our disc and I ran it for probably three or four hours and then it, we had two and a half inches of rain the next couple days. So it's pretty much sat in our shop since then. Uh, we traded two of our other tractors off for this one. So we traded a, what would have been a 927 Fent. I think it was a 2012. And then a 936 Fent. I think that was a 2010. Uh, the reason why we did that was we there was hardly ever a time where we'd run both of those tractors at the same time. So we thought, why do we have those tractors around if we're not always using them? And we've had some issues with our 927 in the last couple of years, some def related issues. It seems like every time it went in the shop to get fixed, it, it'd be back to, with the same issues it had before. It had about 16,000 hours on it, so that tractor was, it used to run on our feed wagon all the time, and we had basically just kept it back as a spare to run on our feed wagon and to do some odd jobs like mowing ditches and stuff around the farm. But, so uh, we decided uh, to trade those two tractors off for this one here, and this one is spec fairly similar to what our 936 was. So the, the main jobs that this tractor will be doing on our farm will be uh, spreading solid manure, so we do that ourselves. We've got a Dagelman manure spreader. So we typically do that in the fall and some in the spring if the conditions are right. So we'll, our manure spreader's in the shop getting worked on now, but it should be ready to go here in the next couple weeks. They've been waiting on parts for a pretty long time for that manure spreader. And then we'll do some disking with it. We'll run this ripper over a few acres with it on some spots, uh, typically around low areas or some really compact spots where the traffic was really heavy. And then we'll, yeah, like I said, we'll pull our, our hay or straw trailer. We've got three, 400 bales left in the field yet that are stacked in the field that we need to haul home. So we'll, we'll do some of that, or you'll probably see some of that this fall yet. And then this tractor will also serve as a, a backup tractor to run our feed wagon. So we've got a, another tractor, it's a 930 Fent, that's running our feed wagon all the time. And we'll use this tractor on the feed wagon if we have issues with that one, which it does happen on occasion, but not often. Out in the field here with our tractor, we've got our, our uh, high-speed disc hooked up here, our Joker. I uh, thought I'd talk a little bit about the functions of the tractor. Uh, show you a little bit more what it looks like on the inside here, I guess. So the, on the dash here, you've got miles per hour, RPMs, and then your climate control. And then you've got your, your lights down here, uh, climate control, the cab. Then you can get into the into the computer with the, some of these buttons here to change some settings or look up error codes, stuff like that. And then on the right here, everything runs through this screen on on this tractor. On the newer ones, they have a, a couple screens, I think. I think one drops down from the top here. I don't think the 900 series has that yet, or, or at least this one maybe would have been just before that. But uh, you've got your hydraulics, you've got some on the joystick right here, then right here you've, would be two on here, and then four on here, and you can 
you can set any hydraulics you have plugged in on any of these controls and you do that in the screen here so depending on what you have plugged in in the back here or what we what I've plugged in in the front you can set any of them up for any of these or this here on the smaller models like the 700 or 500 series you could pro you'd probably have your loader on this one then we've got uh, PTO settings here 1000 thousand e 1300 not sure what you'd run 1300 on that's new for me I've never had anything other than a thousand or 540 on on our tractors but apparently that's an option on this one and then you can change whether your front axle suspension is on differential lock a uh, few other uh, few other things uh, GPS here these buttons and then you control you can control the radio with these here the volume of the radio and then you've also got what fan calls TMS and then foot pedal mode in TMS so basically what that is is the tractor will run RPMs according to the power that it thinks it needs and then if you've got it on foot pedal mode you'd basically run your tractor with your foot kind of like you would in a car or a pickup with an automatic transmission so you you don't throttle the tractor up it, it'll throttle itself and if you want to go faster you push the pedal down if you want to go slower you release and it'll speed up and slow down depending on how far you push the pedal in pretty much like a car I guess I really like that I'm a big fan of that I use it all the time when we're say we have a hay trailer or something behind our tractor or even if even with the manure spreader going up and down the road that's what I use when when we're doing that uh, some of the other things here you can they've got these go and end buttons here on the joystick you can customize those uh, with this disc I have it set up to if I turn around at the end or at wherever I'm turning around I'll lift up so and, and then I turn around going back the other way I push go it GPS kicks on and then it drops the disc down into the back into the ground just with one click of the button and you could uh, if you if, if you're pulling a manure spreader or if you if you're doing something that has a bunch of different controls that you want to do at a certain time you can set it up to do those in a certain order so if say we had our manure spreader on here you could set it up to where you hit go it kick on the PTO then it rev up the engine a little bit later and then it would open the rear chute and then it would turn the chain on and you could set it up to do the reverse action when your your load is empty by pushing SA end. And you can set it set it up a lot of different ways like that. And I think that's pretty handy. There aren't a lot of differences between this tractor and our older ones, but a couple of the main ones that I've that I've noticed so far is that our older ones would have a high and low range. Where you'd put in low range if you're doing field work or tillage work like I am now. But if we were hauling bales over the field, you'd have it in high range. <coughs> we're now, there's just one range, so you're never having to change between ranges. And I guess one of the other big things that's different is our, our, uh, our 930 Fent and the two tractors we traded off, they all had Deutsch engines. This one has an MAN. And this one runs at lower RPMs. So like right now I'm running I don't know if you guys can quite see that it's right around 1500 rpms and it's it's pulling our this disc just fine here it's kind of uh, strange to get used to supposedly you get better fuel savings I don't know if that's really the case well we'll, we'll see it uh, it doesn't feel like the tractor is underpowered but it almost sounds like it kind of is I don't know if that I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but it definitely, yeah, it's, it's got a little bit of a different sound, or it doesn't sound quite like the other tractors did. Um, it is pretty quiet in this cab. I don't know if you guys will be able to tell that on the video or not, but it's, yeah, it's, it's very quiet in the cab. What I'm doing here is, uh, there was a few spots on our fields that had 
some weeds in it and I don't like weeds so we're just disking them under here uh, not gonna do the whole field we'll put manure on this field in the spring so we'll, it'll get tilled up then and then we'll once the manure is dried up we'll go over it again with like a finishing type tillage tool like a sulfur or something like that and we'll uh, we'll maybe stop here and get out and see take a look at the tractor on the outside so we've got 900 tires on the back so pretty wide tires with a uh, thousand kilogram weight wheel weights on either side we've got 650s in the front we do have duels uh, the hubs are not put on yet we'll uh, probably do that this winter sometime we don't really need them now we've got 2500 kilogram weight in the front front three point and a front pto don't ha really have a lot of use for that but we wanted to have it on there in case down the road we did have a use for it like putting a uh, triple mowers on this tractor or something like that and then we did have two hydraulic remotes in the front and then we've got five in the back here and we've got air brakes which we we use our uh, brakes on our hay trailer so we hook those up to the tractor uh, Hydraulic trailer brakes, PTO, three points, pretty standard. I've ran it in the dark a couple times. The lights on it are pretty good. It's, yeah, visibility is very good. What we're doing here is, weeds aren't too bad right here, but you can see those, there's some, some spots of weeds here that are, this is what it looks like afterwards. A lot better than see, looking at those weeds. So basically, this disc—it's got—it's got discs pointing opposite directions, and they're basically turning the dirt over, burying the the weeds or whatever to be on top of the soil. Works really good for working in solid manure, also. This disc, so you can see that. It's kind of a weed, weed patch right there. That's, that's what I'm doing out here. I had been running the RPMs manually at around 1450. So it seems like if you use TMS with tillage, when you pick up at the end, then it throttles down. Then when you put the implement back in the ground, then it, it doesn't react quite fast enough. So it really bogs down the engine. Not a bit, not a big fan of that. So I like to run it at like, partial rpms and then let the tractor do the rest from there it's not quite reactive enough for tillage work i feel like so this tractor does have gps on it or if you can you can either set it on a quarter of the screen or you can set it for the whole screen but it's it's in the same screen as the rest of the functions are and then there's yeah, a lot of a lot of different ways you can set set it up you can set set cameras up in here uh, or just information about the tractor or you can do half screen GPS I believe or full screen so you can look at your what your fuel usage is uh, the radio is also in this screen the hydraulics three point settings uh, there's you can set up so C1 and C2 here that's for cruise control so you can set up two different cruise controls in there so if I think I've got it yeah, I've got two is set at nine one is set at 15 so if you're I'm in two now if you bump it over it'll go to nine that's what I had been running at I slowed down a little bit so it wouldn't be so bumpy a lot of times I'll set one up for road speed and then one and then two up for speed in the field so if you're going over the road you push one push over and then it'll go to full speed on the road so this is what i was talking about here so i i push go tractor steered itself to get back in line and then the disc dropped down in the ground you can go through here set your three points so this is the front three point back rear three point change your hydraulic settings 
engine settings so it's got a reversing fan on it you can set the timer on that you can set uh, you can set RPM so there's a min and max RPM button on here so if you click one in or you can set it on here if you click that button it'll go to the, that RPMs and hold it there yeah a lot of lot of different things on here I don't have a lot of experience with other brand tractors so I've spent some time in case and John Deere tractors but not enough to really give it a fair comparison to our fence um, we've been really happy with our tractors so I when we're happy with a certain piece of equipment or a certain manufacturer we like to stick with them and it makes it a lot easier for me and for our guys to have similar equipment so that if you have to jump from one tractor to another or one loader to another that the controls are similar it makes it a lot easier to learn how to use that tractor probably what i like most about the fence is that they're really user friendly once you get to know how everything works you figure out how all the buttons work and how you can set it up in different ways and uh, I also like that they're pretty versatile so we can use them for a lot of different jobs on the farm not a big fan of having equipment sitting around not doing anything especially with the what equipment costs nowadays it doesn't pay to have it sit in the shop it needs to be working Thank you.